So uh, hold on. So Jesse says, hi, Dean. I see your PowerPoint. If you have any issues, uh, you can contact Alex for tech. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jesse. Appreciate that. Uh, so um, um, yeah. So folks, for those of you who want to connect with me, uh, feel free. So um, on my LinkedIn profile over there and happy to connect with you. And uh, you know, on, on my profile, you see the follow button. So if you want to connect with me, send me an invitation to connect. Uh, right next to the follow button, just click on more or the arrow down and then just uh, just hit connect and I'll be happy to uh, connect with you. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, so Diana says, click on the slides and it will maximize the sides. Uh, yeah, I did do that, Diana. So hopefully that's good. Um, all right. So without further ado, let me let me get this thing started, uh, folks. Uh, before I go ahead and get started, just a brief about me. AKA, why should we pay attention to you today, Dean, right? Like most of you might, might be wondering, right? For those of you who are tuning in. So a quick brief about me and, and what I'm what I'm going to be speaking about and what my what the information I'm presenting today is based on. So firstly, so I have a total of eight years of experience in IT recruitment. Uh, four of that is running my own recruitment business. And then the four years working for other recruitment agencies uh, ranging from smaller size to large size agencies. Uh, so my recruitment perspective is based on that actual on the ground, you know, hands-on experience in recruitment. And the tips I'm, tips I'm sharing today are based on my experience in the recruitment industry, right? Uh, and I am one of the most active and well-known IT recruiters on LinkedIn here in Toronto. And uh, as of today, I have built out a following of, of uh, over 23,000 on LinkedIn alone because I post content applicable to the struggles of job seekers from a recruiter standpoint. And uh, the reason I've been able to build such a following is because I'm, I provide tips and advice and, and uh, strategies uh, again, from a recruiter standpoint, someone who's in communication with candidates and job seekers on a regular basis uh, that'll help people in their job search. Uh, so that has given me the privilege and, and, and the ability to build such a, such a great following of supporters on LinkedIn. And I'm also one of the only IT recruiters here in Toronto approved for LinkedIn live broadcasting, which is again, another huge privilege. Uh, for those of you interested, I do do, uh, I do three live, live uh, weekly shows on my LinkedIn live. So you're most welcome to tune in whenever. Uh, I'll give more information about those live shows. Uh, they're completely free, by the way, uh, uh, at the end of the presentation. So those of you know uh, what to expect on those shows. And uh, while my specialty has been in IT recruitment, what I'm sharing today, I know most of, you know, not all of you are going to be in IT that are joining this session. Uh, but uh, I will be sharing tips today that apply to any industry, any field, or any skill set. So if you're not in IT, don't worry. It's not going to be just about the IT uh, tips and advice for IT professionals. Um, I'm specifically speaking about tips, advice, and strategies applicable only 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 to uh, you know anyone anyone across any any industry or any skill set uh, and also in the meantime if you have any questions uh, you know as I'm going through the slides uh, be you know feel free to put in the comments I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you that you have uh, appreciate the the shout out and by the way folks uh, Diana was actually uh, one of my guests on one of my live shows um, uh, and she's an amazing person to follow so if you haven't uh, if you weren't listening to D Diana's session or you don't follow her on LinkedIn make sure you check it out check her out uh, great great uh, great content that she posts so make sure you check out Diana as well uh, great person to follow appreciate that shout out Diana uh, so without further ado tip number one and this is probably the source of, of uh, pain and, and disappointment for so many so many job seekers is uh, the lack of understanding of on, on how recruiters really work, how they operate, how they work. And this is probably one of the most important tips, folks. And, and by the way, if you are, this, this probably would be a good note-taking session. So if you're taking notes, uh, make sure you're ready to take notes. Uh, also, I know 20 minutes is my time limit, limit but I'll, I'm probably going to go over. So hopefully all of you are okay with that. I wanted you to leave this session with realistic information and strategies and advice uh, on how to effectively utilize recruiters, right? So anyway, tip number one, understand how recruiters work. Now, understanding the extent to which a recruiter can assist you as a job seeker. So that's what I want to speak about just to kind of kick things off, right? So understanding how recruiters operate will help you have a realistic outlook and set realistic expectations during your job search as a job seeker. Now, we've all seen those posts on LinkedIn, you know, the recruiters reaching out, to, you know, I reached out to the recruiter, they're not getting back to me. Uh, the recruiter did this, the recruiter did that. Why aren't recruiters reaching out? And a common common frustration I always get from people who, you know, my viewers and my audience on LinkedIn is, Dean, why is it so difficult to, to get the attention of recruiters? Why aren't recruiters reaching out to me? Why don't they respond to me? I send them messages. Why, why is this happening? So the expectation is, and this is from most job seekers, and if you're thinking this, I mean, it's not your fault. A lot of job seekers think this. Uh, the expectation is, hey, Dean, you know, recruiters are supposed to help me find a job. 
why are they not helping me find a job? Right. I mean, that's the frustration all of us have. Most of us had to have had at some point as job seekers. I know I've, I've, I've felt that way before I became a recruiter, but look, the reality is this recruiters find talent for organizations, folks. This is very important. If you're taking notes, you want to write this down because there's a very clear dif uh, um, differentiating factor between these, right? Uh, and the expectation is, yeah, recruiters are supposed to help me find a job, but no, actually the reality is the recruiter's job is to find talent for organizations. And this is the case, whether it's a staffing agency recruiter or a corporate recruiter, right? Now there's obviously differences between a staffing agency and a corporate recruiter, but in essence, it's the same, like even for corporate and now I'm, I come from a staffing agency background, but if it's a corporate recruiter, it's the same thing. The, uh, for them, they're, they're looking for talent for their, their specific organization. Now, if it's a staffing agency, it might be multiple organizations, right? Because, because staffing agencies work with multiple clients and organizations. So, uh, and even in that case, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the whole point of the recruiter's job and their focus is finding talent for their clients, for those multiple organizations. And look, the, the reality for job seekers uh, such as yourself is, and this is this is another important point. So if you're taking notes, make sure you write this down. For job seekers, the job search starts with your need as a job seeker for a job, for a new job, or, or for a job change, right? That's, that's where the job cycle, the job search cycle, uh, that's how it starts for the job seeker. I need a job or I want to change my job. That's where the whole thing starts for you as, as a job seeker, right? Now, for the recruiter, it's different because the reality for the recruiters, such as myself and other recruiters, and again, staffing agency or corporate recruiters is, the recruitment cycle starts with my clients, that is to say my, an organization's need for talent, right? So what you have is two parties, you know, and, and, and the whole thing starts from different parts of the process and, and different aspects, right? For the job seeker, it's, yeah, I need a job. For the, for the recruiter is, yeah, I need to find talent, right? Now, why do I mention this is, uh, um, you know, from the recruiter's perspective. So I'm going to shift into the, into the recruiter's perspective right now. For the recruiter's perspective, how they prioritize their search and who they who they want to reach out to, who they want to connect with, which job seekers they want to get into communication with, which skill sets they want to focus on, what roles they're actively working on is is what highly influences what their focus is going to be on, right? And this is probably the number one reason why most recruiters are probably not getting back in touch with you or not reaching out to you on your initial contact. Uh, now, in terms of, you know, the recruiters you are in contact with, we're going to speak about that later on. What I'm talking about here is that initial contact when you're reaching out to recruiters, you're, you're sending your resume, you're sending that initial introductory email, why aren't they responding? In most cases, it's simply because they're not recruiting for your skill set, right? And I wanted to emphasize this because this is, again, a, a source of, of great misunderstanding that job seekers have in relation to recruiters. Uh, and going back to what I mentioned before, the recruiter's job starts with, okay, what does my organization need or what does my client need? <clears throat> and, you know, my job is to now go out there and find them those specific people. So as an example, let's say I'm recruiting for a uh, organization or for a client and they're looking for a, uh, a software developer, right? Uh, and let's say I'm working on multiple software developer roles. So all of, the, all of the roles, for whatever reason right now I'm working on, I'm recruiting on our software development mm -hmm. roles. And specifically Java developers, I'm looking for Java developers, right? I'm using the IT example. I'm an IT recruiter, so that's the example I'm going to use. Uh, but let's say I'm only focused on looking for IT uh, for Java developers, right? Now, folks, my entire focus as a recruiter, when I'm going out into the marketplace, when I'm prioritizing who I need to be communicating with and connecting with and getting in touch with or finding or sourcing or searching, 100% my focus, if I'm only recruiting on Java developer roles, my focus is entirely going to be on that because... My, that's what my clients are looking for, right? Or most of my clients are looking for. If I'm a corporate recruiter, if my organization is only looking for Java developers, that's going to be my mandate. That's going to be my my focus. So let's say you're a uh, even a, a like some other developer, right? Like let's say you're a .NET developer, right? A totally different programming language. Uh, if I'm only looking for Java developers and you're a .NET developer, I might not be able to really help you at this point, right? And again, just like any profession, any other career, folks, uh, recruiters ha have to prioritize their tasks, right? So my point is at this point in time, you know, as a recruiter, I'm only looking for Java developers. So I, that's that's probably why if I'm getting any incoming messages, like introductory messages from people who are business analysts or project managers or program managers or uh, systems administrators and, and uh, you know, .NET developers, I might get around to responding to those messages eventually, but my, my number one priority, right, the KPI that I have to reach uh, the thing that my manager is going to be asking me about is, Dean, have you found Java developers for this position? 
So that's what the recruiter's focus is going to be, folks, right? So I just wanted to set things off with that realistic outlook as to why at the initial stages, you might not be getting responses to your communication, to your emails, to your messages, to your response, uh, to your, to your uh, you, know, um, um, uh, you know, LinkedIn messages and emails and all of that. Now, some of you might be saying, yeah, but Dean, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to the recruiters regarding specific positions and specific roles. And, uh, you know, they're not getting back to me. Now, that's a completely different story, folks, right? Now, that, that um, I, I know that some of the other uh, speakers have spoken about, you know, the, the, the impact of COVID-19. There's a high increase of available talent on the market. So the online application space can be a little crowded right now. So what I'm going to be speaking about later on in today's session is how you can actually network with recruiters. Uh, so we're going get to get to that shortly. But I'm sure uh, some of the other speakers probably gave you more insights into how to navigate the current market and, and not depending solely on the online applications and the online resumes, right? Uh, so that was step number one. Now, step number two is, now we're going to get into the communication part. Let me just quickly check the comments. Hope everybody is, hey, Nikhil, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate that. By the way, if, you, if anyone has, has any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. Uh, looks like everyone's seeing the PowerPoint fine. So it looks like the technology is good. Perfect. So tip number two, getting into communication with the right recruiters. Now, this is extremely important. This is probably a mistake that a, a, lot, of, a lot of job seekers make is uh, chasing after the wrong people, chasing after the wrong recruiters, right? So what I'm going to be talking about in this section is how do you get into communication with the right recruiters, right? Because you want all of us have a finite amount of time every day, folks, right? Now, if those of you who are unemployed, you probably maybe you have more time, you know, to dedicate to your job search. Uh, but, but even then, let's say you have like, you know, seven, eight hours that you're dedicating to your job search. That's still a finite number of time. And you want to spend that time effectively. So, um, and, and for those of you who are currently employed, you maybe have even lesser time to dedicate to your job search. So this is where the importance of, you know, don't waste time on the wrong recruiters, right? And that, again, that's, that's a major mistake that I see a lot of job seekers make is chasing after the wrong people, chasing after the wrong recruiters, following up with the wrong recruiters. You want to establish if it even makes sense for you to, to pursue or follow up with or get into communication with, with uh, you know, whatever recruiters you have in your pipeline that you're trying to reach out to and connect with. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, look, you got to seek out, you know, the, the specialist recruiters. Right. And this could be staffing agency or, or corporate recruiters. Now, when I mean specialist, what I'm talking about is, uh, firstly, what is your field, your skill set or your industry? So you need to really take note of. So so if you're uh, if you're, let's say, an accountant. Right. And, and don't ask me any accounting questions. I don't know anything about accounting. I just wanted to give an example outside of IT. But if you're an accountant, for example, you need to find out what recruiters out there specialize purely on recruiting accountants. Or, or if not purely accountants, at least in the finance space, right? Like, so people who, who work in uh, various finance roles, that's what you want to focus your, your, your attention on is recruiters who focus on that specific industry, field, or skill set. So if you're an accountant and you're re reaching out to me and I'm an IT recruiter, that's not, that's not the best use of your time because chances are I'll never, ever recruit on a, uh, on a, on a finance related or an accountant related uh, position, uh, at least while I'm an IT recruiter, right? Because my skill set, my, my primary responsibility is finding IT people. So the first thing you need to do folks is make sure you're, you're not chasing after the wrong recruiter. So first thing you need to do, and after this session, I highly advise you do the, I advise you to do this, do your research, find out what agencies out there, uh, you know, specialize in your field, your skill set, your industry, uh, because there's agencies that that specialize in those various aspects, industry, field, skill sets. So make sure you do your research. Now, on the corporate recruitment side, uh, depending on the organization, sometimes organizations, if they have a large volume of certain types of skill sets, they will hire a specialist recruiter, right? So there might be an organization that they have a high volume of, uh, I'm going to go back to the IT example, right? Let's say they have a high volume of software developers or, or a, a high volume of IT related positions, software developers, sysadmins, uh, IT PMs, uh, business analysts, those kind of roles. They will probably invest in bringing on an IT recruiter, someone, a, a corporate recruiter who specializes in IT recruitment to focus entirely on the IT roles. So on the corporate side, right, when you're reaching out to organizations, when you're doing your research, you might want to see if there's a specialized recruiter within internally at the organization. And, and that would be definitely someone you want to keep in touch with, not just for right now. And by the way, I'm going to talk about this uh, uh, more later on, but even for later on, right? Like even when you're not, uh, you know, throughout your career, you can keep in touch with this person because maybe they're not looking for your skill set right now. Maybe there's nothing for, for you at their organization internally right now, but it's possible something might come up later on, right? So keep that in mind. Very important point. 
Uh, and yeah, just to kind of add to that, there might be specialist recruiters who are entirely focused on your space. So just keep that in mind. Very important uh, point. Now, when approaching recruiters, remember, a recruiter's primary focus is on active positions they're recruiting on, right? So, so their focus entirely, you know, their attention is on active positions that they're really recruiting on. That's the focus. Those are the targets that they're going to meet. So in your communication, you got to be direct as much as possible, folks. You got to be as direct as possible in your communication. So I know some of the speakers might have talked to you about building rapport and, you know, there's some maybe some small talk here and there. And that definitely makes sense, uh, you know, in those, you know, when you're reaching to you know various types of individuals with recruiters. My advice to you folks, be as direct as possible because small talk might not prove useful and it can all, it could pretty much, you know, a lot of times just fall flat, especially if you're only starting off your messaging with small talk and there's no context. And, and there's and you're not adding any you're not being direct in, in what your ask is and why you're reaching out. And again, this goes back to what I said before, folks. Right. Remember, a recruiter's primary mandate is to find talent. Their entire focus. It's, it's a very specialized role. It's not one of those roles where you're doing like a whole bunch of things. Right. Like um, like an, uh, someone who's an HR manager, for example, might be doing various things. They might be doing some recruiting. They might be doing some, uh, you know, HR related stuff like HR policies, employee stuff. Uh, procedures and this kind of stuff, you know, it's, 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 it's a very uh, varied role, right? But a recruiter is 100%, 100% of their day is concerned with communicating with the right talent and finding that talent and presenting that talent for the right positions for their clients or internally at the organization. So because of that, because the role is highly specialized, you want to be directing your communication. Now, that doesn't mean you don't want to, you, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're someone who does do some small talk, you want to do what's natural to you, right? So if you want to say, hey, how are you doing? You know, how's it going? How are you doing? Uh, you know, how's things going, blah, 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 all of that. That's fine. But you want to write a complete message or if you're over the phone, you need to be, you need to get to the point as soon as possible so that you can capture their attention and, and really uh, continue with the communication. And I'm going to be giving you, uh, sharing with you a script uh, shortly as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and, and the next task you need to do is, as I kind of mentioned right now, is you need to generate interest in your profile. So I'm going to speak more about this on the next slide. Uh, and look, your ultimate aim should be to get on a phone call with the recruiter, right? Uh, mis mistake a lot of job seekers make is they they send the email message or the, or the LinkedIn message and the, the entire sales pitch is right there in the message. So that's not the point, folks. You want to use LinkedIn. You want to use email messaging to capture attention that will then convert into a phone call or ideally or, or maybe even a video interview, right? But usually it's a phone call. So your ultimate aim should be, get on, should be to get on a phone call with the recruiter. Uh, so initially, you know, most of you send uh, the the uh, the LinkedIn or email message. Uh, next step is get on a phone call, right? And the side note is staffing agencies are also very open to receiving, you know, receiving unsolicited phone calls from job seekers, right? A lot of people say, hey, Dean, is, is it okay to call a staffing agency? Absolutely, 100%, folks. It's completely fine for you to call a staffing agency. Most staffing agencies, at least those that I have worked at, have no issue with candidates calling in to introduce themselves and say, hey, I want to speak to a recruiter. Uh, staffing agencies, again, very open to receiving unsolicited phone calls from job seekers and candidates. Uh, the primary mandate of a standard staffing agency is to constantly build relationships and communication with candidates that they can potentially uh, place for their, their clients, right, and, and the organizations they partner with. Now, for corporate recruiters, it depends. Again, going back, if, if it is a corporate recruiter that specializes in your skill set, uh, much more likely that they might be open to a phone interview. But if it's a general recruiter, they recruit on a whole bunch of different types of roles and positions. Uh, they might be less likely to be open to a phone call, right? Because uh, their focus uh, is on what's, what they're working on right now. Specialist recruiter, their attitude is, okay, yeah, I might not be able to help so-and-so right now. But given that I specialize in IT or given that I specialize in accounting roles or finance roles, I might need someone with this skill set in the near future. So they're more open to that. Uh, unsolicited communication. So keep that in mind. You got to make that judgment, folks, right? Uh, so, and then the next thing is you want to find out if they're recruiting for your skill set actively. Um, and uh, we're going to speak about this later. And then set up a further conversation or meeting if they are, right? <clears throat> so the next step, the structure of, of your phone call or LinkedIn message for a, uh, uh, you know, if you're reaching out to a recruiter. Now, I did see a, a quick question here. Uh, Lori, thanks for your question. Um, actually, uh, yeah. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think Diana already asked to answer that question, but thanks for, uh, thanks for, uh, you know, uh, uh, responding to that Diana, uh, Ismail says, is there a directory for recruiters and staffing agencies? Ismail? Yes, there is. It's called Google. My friend, you got to go on Google. You got to do your research, right? So depending on your skill set, uh, do your research and, and figure out which agencies out there that, uh, can potentially recruit on your skill set. 
so appreciate your questions and yeah folks feel free to you know put put your questions in the comments uh, Diana says, yes, don't waste time on the wrong recruiters. Focus on connecting with those who recruit in your industry or profession. Yeah, absolutely, folks. And, um, um, you know, and, and that's the whole thing, right? You want to make efficient use of your time. So so always keep that in mind. Now, your structure of your phone call to or LinkedIn email message to a recruiter. First of all, and, and by the way, before I get into this, right, uh, the, mess the, the mistake a lot of people make, and as a recruiter, I receive these mess incoming messages from recruiters all the time. Uh, also, I did notice that we're already at the 20 minutes mark. So, you know, I'm, I still have some ways to go. So hopefully all of you are good with that. Uh, but I'm going to keep pushing forward and moving forward. Uh, but the biggest mistake that I see with uh, that, you know, that job seekers make when they're reaching out to recruiters is not, again, going back to what I said before, not getting to the point and, and not being direct in their communication, right? Uh, a lot of times I get messages, for example, that say, hey, Dean, how's it going? Oh, hey, Dean, how are you? Or, or, or just sometimes it's just, hey, Dean. And that's it. No more, no more information, nor the message, nor the context. So folks, it's fine to ask, how are you? How's it going? How are you doing? You know, I'm, that's fine. I do that as well. You definitely want to, you know, show yourself as personable and, and you know, uh, social to some degree, right? But you do not want to leave your messages at, at just that. This is not BlackBerry. This is not, uh, you know, WhatsApp or BlackBerry Messenger, uh, if, if uh, BlackBerry Messenger even exists anymore, uh, or some online chat. It's not the same, folks. This, you need to write a complete message. So what I'm going to uh, do in this slide is go over a suggested format that all of you need to be using when you're reaching out to recruiters, right? So the first part is the greeting, right? Very pretty simple. Who are you? Who who you are? By the way, I'm going to be giving examples of this in the next slide. So I'm just giving you a brief overview right now. So number one is greeting. Who 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 you are? Right? Who are you? Uh, number two is intention. Why are you reaching out? What's your intention? Uh, what are you looking to get out of this? Right? Number three, hook or capture capture attention. This is where you need to capture the, the the recruiter's attention, right? It's something attention grabbing, like like makes the makes the recruiter say, "Oh wow, okay, I need to pay attention." You know, I need to get into communication with this person, uh, and yeah, why they need to pay attention to you, right? That's the whole point of that. And then finally is the ask or the call to action. Uh, this final part is something that a lot of job seekers miss out on. You know, based on my experience as a recruiter, is uh, not having a clear ask or a clear call to action. So okay, great, you got the greeting, you got the intention, you got the hook. But then what, right? There's there's like crickets. So you you gotta have the call or, or uh, the the ask or the call to attention, right? Uh, and, and when you're going through this, when when you write a complete message like this, it basically answers. If you notice, like all of these aspects, who you are, why you're reaching out, why the recruiter needs to pay attention to you, and what you need from them, these answer all the questions the recruiter has in their mind as soon as they read the, read your message. Right, because everyone, and this, by the way, this could probably apply to everyone, by the way, like, you know, from my personal opinion, like you can apply this to anyone that you're reaching out to. These are the exact questions they're going to be, they have in their mind that they're not asking you, but they're thinking when you reach out to them, whether it's a phone call or an email message or a LinkedIn message. Who's this person? Why are they reaching out? Why do I, well, you know, why, why should I pay my, pay, pay attention to this right now? Why is it important? And number three, what do they need from me? What's the call to action here? What's the next step? So you're all, when you, when you write a complete message, you're already answering all these questions up front so that they can make a quick decision as to whether uh, this is something that they can, uh, you know, whether they want to get into communication with you, whether it makes sense for, for them to get in, get in touch with you, right? Now, keys to a great hook. Now, these are just some tips uh, from my end. <clears throat> now, firstly, you want to keep it very short, concise, and to the point, folks. Some of you are writing like theses, like, these, like a thesis or dissertation or something. You don't want to be too long, folks. I have seen extremely, extremely long uh, initial introductory messages on LinkedIn that I'm not, uh, uh, you know, most recruiters are not going to take the time to, to read. Uh, this is something that you need to capture the attention like real quick, right? And I'm going to be getting getting to that shortly. Uh, and then, yeah, you and you want to capture attention. An important part of capturing attention is focusing on the results or the ROI you achieved and and name drop if at all possible, right? When I say name drop, I mean, if you worked at some impressive organizations, uh, name dropping can prove very useful. Right. Name, name dropping is very, very useful uh, because that's what's going to that, that can capture attention. Because sometimes if you say, yeah, I, uh, you know, uh, for, as an example, what, what I can use as a name drop is, yeah, I worked at, you know, I just finished a contract with uh, Coca-Cola or I just finished a contract at Google. Uh, I just finished a contract at KPMG. Like when you name drop, that also captures the attention. Right. Uh, now, if you don't have that, you want to focus on your results, ROI, scope of the scope of the project. Right. I just finished a, a 10 million dollar project, you know, things like that. And you want to tailor it to who you're speaking to, right? And what I, and I wanted to stress that because you don't want to get too technical for a non-technical person. Uh, when you're reaching out to a recruiter, folks, even if it's an IT recruiter, 
uh, not all IT recruiters come from an IT background. Now, now in my case, I did major in IT. I, I did early on in my career work in IT. So I do have a certain understanding of IT, right? Uh, not all recruiters are going to have that same level of understanding. So you, you don't want to get too technical and stuff like that. Uh, if and, and even out, this applies for those of you outside of IT as well, right? Like uh, if you're if you're in a different field, you're in the maths or the sciences, accounting, finance. If you're reaching out to a recruiter, you definitely want to mention popular keywords. That'll definitely capture their attention. But if you get into too much technical details and stuff, they're just going to get confused. That it's not going to make sense to them, right? And and um, it's just not going to make sense to them. So anyway, here's an example, right? Uh, so I'm a senior project manager with eight years of experience. I just completed a project where I was leading an ERP implementation. I was brought in due to my expertise in Microsoft Dynamics ERP projects. And my recent employers had a project manager suddenly leave the project and they were backlogged and behind schedule. Due to my involvement, I was able to pick up where they left off, successfully complete the project ahead of schedule, resulting in the renewal of our contract with the customer valued at $1 million. Now, if I was an IT recruiter and, and, you know, assuming this person reached out to me because they saw my job posting that I was looking for a project manager and, uh, and I listed ERP uh, implementation as, as part of the, you know, major aspect of the project, this would probably capture my attention. Why? Because this person is mentioning that they have a specialty in ERP implementation projects. Uh, they're a senior level project manager and I'm looking for a senior level project manager. And they also mentioned that they were working on this fairly large scope project, right? Like $1 million. So I'm just, I'm, I just threw in a number there. But uh, that might that would also capture my attention, right? So you want to men you want to maintain you want to make sure you're mentioning things that capture the attention of the receiver, especially if you're reaching out regarding a specific position, right? So always keep that in mind. Now I'm just going to give an example of a full introductory call or message. Now this could apply, folks. Now as I mentioned before, it is preferable you have this uh, over a phone conversation, but this could very well be your message as uh, like an email, email message or LinkedIn message or email message as well. So this is gonna th this particular one is gonna f uh, gonna, gonna be based off a of phone call message. So this is assuming you call into a staffing agency, you get hold of an IT recruiter or, or whatever recruiter for your field, and uh, and you're introducing yourself, right? But if you want to do this, in, if you don't want to do the phone call, you want to do a message, or email or LinkedIn message. You know, just change the context, and you can apply this very strange same structure to a uh, a direct message or an email as well. All right, so the greeting. Hey, uh, so let's say someone's calling me, right? Hey, Dean, this is uh, so-and-so calling. We haven't spoken before. However, I got your contact info from your LinkedIn profile. Now, side note, contact is always recommended, uh, folks, even if you've spoken in the past. Because, uh, look, recruiters speak to many, many candidates over the course of one day. And even uh, if you speak to a recruiter on a Monday, by the time, uh, you know, Friday comes, they've already spoken to, you know, at a minimum, like 40 to 50 candidates. It's possible by the time Friday comes, they don't even remember your conversation with them unless they're representing you through an active interview pipeline, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, unless you're they're actively representing you for an actual interview cycle that they're, you know, moving you, uh, pushing you through a, a, along. Uh, if not, if you spoke to them on Monday and, and you call them again on Friday, they might not even remember who you are. So you need to always provide some context every time you speak to call, to call, call on a recruiter. Uh, and you're following up or anything of that sort, unless, again, unless, unless they are representing you for an active position, obviously they will know who you are. You know, all they'll, they'll know all that stuff. But this is for if you're reaching out, uh, you know, after some time or you're following up or stuff like that. So always provide some context. Now, the intention, right? The reason for my call is I'm a senior project manager and I'm currently seeking my next contract. I noticed you're currently recruiting for PMs with experience in ERP projects. And I wanted to introduce myself as I felt the posting was a great fit for me. All right, so I'm stating, you're stating your attention right, right there up front for the recruiter. So I'm, I'm on the phone. I'm like, okay, I understand. So already, uh, you know, you, you've answered my first question. Who is this and how do we know each other? Second one is, okay, why are you calling? I know why you're calling right now. Next one, you're going to go into your hook, right? Or your elevator pitch. Uh, I have eight years of experience and I just completed a project where I was leading an ERP implementation. I was brought in due to my expertise in Microsoft Dynamics ERP projects and my recent employers had a project manager suddenly leave the project and they were backlogged and behind schedule. Due to my involvement, I was able to pick up where they left off, successfully complete the project actually ahead of schedule, resulting in the renewal of our contract with the customer valued at $1 million, right? That's my hook. So I'm, so I'm, I'm listening to this as a recruiter few things capture my attention, right? Firstly, I'm looking for a senior project manager. And by the way, th this person is calling regarding a specific position. So first thing I'm looking at, it, it, it was a posting for a senior project manager. Second thing is I'm definitely looking for a PM who has experience with Microsoft Dynamics. So they mentioned that in the hook, right? 
And the next thing is, it seems like it's a pretty, you know, impressive scope of a project, like a $1 million, uh, uh, you know, contract for that customer. So my attention is caught right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm definitely paying attention. <clears throat> Finally, you want to get into the call of action, right? Or you ask. Uh, so this person would say, hey, based on what I told you, Dean, about myself, how well do you believe I fit the PM role you're currently recruiting on? I'd like to spend a further 10 to 15 minutes to let you know more about what I can do for your client. Do you have time right now? So you're going straight for the ask uh, folks and you want to see if the recruiter has a further 10, 15 minutes to discuss your profile right now. So you can go over your experience in more detail, right? And then further the conversation, right? So you can discuss the role. They can tell you more about the role and, and see if they can present you for the position. <clears throat> so hopefully, hope that helps. Uh, let me just quickly check the comments. Uh, any questions here? Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, what is this? Can we get this deck after the... Uh, so Megan says, can we get this deck after the conference? Yeah, absolutely, Megan. Yeah, absolutely. We, I, I, I'd be happy to share that. Uh, can we get the deck? I think we don't need to say that we're looking for a job, as they already know. It's about what value I can add. Uh, so Ismail, um, I'm not sure what you're to say that we are looking for a job, as they already know. It's about what value I can add. Yeah, absolutely, Ismail. But um, what value you can add doesn't really matter if they don't have an active position that's a match for you, right? So that's the whole reason why you want to firstly mention that that you're on the market for work. Then you want to mention what your skill set and your experience is. And that's when you want to get into your pitch and, and, and identifying whether or not it's a, it's a good, uh, you know, mutual fit. Right. And then uh, Diana says, peak their interest with an interesting soundbite. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Diana says, drop the jargon. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ismail says, in messages, less is more. Keep it short and sweet. Absolutely agree with you, uh, Ismail. Uh, Martin says, love the script and overview for a full introductory call message. Great overview. Very helpful. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. Uh, Ismail says a good framework is Tiara. Search it. All right. Yeah. Never heard of Tiara, uh, but feel free to search that. Uh, okay. All right. So let's go into the next slide. So tip number three is the key questions to ask a recruiter after your initial pitch, right? <clears throat> now this is to establish whether it makes sense for you to keep in touch with this recruiter or uh, even follow up with them. Right. And the, so these are important questions to ask during your initial conversation. <clears throat> and these are the three questions. Right. First one is, are you actively looking for someone with my professional skills, uh, professional experience and skill set at this time? Or how well do you believe I fit the position you're currently recruiting for? Now, the second question there we already covered. Uh, if you're reaching out regarding a specific position, you already know that they have a specific position that might be a fit. So the second part of that will be what you were asking. But let's say you're calling in the staffing agency simply to introduce yourself, right? You're not calling about a specific position. You want to find out if they have anything for you right now that they're working on, that they're recruiting, and that will be a fit. And the next question is, how frequently have you recruited for my skill set in the past, right? So right now what you're doing is you're investigating whether it makes sense, if, you know, if they're not recruiting for your skill set right now, whether they have in the past recruited for your skill set. You're determining whether it makes sense for you to keep in touch with this recruiter. And the third question is, how often do you anticipate recruiting for my skill set in the future, right? So uh, they, they confirm, yeah, you know what, you know, we're not looking for, uh, for any project managers right now. Uh, then you ask them, okay, excellent. Uh, now, how frequently have you recruited for my skill set in the past, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dean? Uh, then I can say, yeah, I mean, uh, in the past, definitely have frequently recruited for project managers. We usually get PM roles uh, probably once or twice a month or so, uh, right? Uh, okay, excellent. And Dean, how often do you, you know, do you anticipate recruiting for PM roles in the future? Do you anticipate, given that you have recruited for PM roles in the past, do you anticipate that pattern continuing? Like, do you see further PM roles coming up in the future? Uh, so that's, that's the third question you want to ask, right? And that'll, and then the recruiter should be able to tell you, yeah, I mean, absolutely. We, we have, we actually have a few clients. They're always contacting us about PM roles. We'll definitely be able to recruit on these in the future. So what this does folks is it allows you to evaluate whether it makes sense for you to keep in touch with this recruiter. Right. And then whether it makes sense for you to keep in touch with them, follow up with them and, and continue that relationship and that communication. Right. Uh, so and, and yeah, like I said, knowing the above will help you determine a follow up schedule as well. Uh, so knowing the, the responses to these three key questions. Right. Especially if you're reaching out, not regarding a specific position, but you're just calling to introduce yourself. This will give you an idea if it makes sense for you to keep in touch, because if their answer is no for all three of these questions, doesn't make sense for you to chase after that recruiter, right? Or keep in touch with them or follow up with them. So uh, these asking these questions will help you evaluate whether it makes sense for you to keep in touch and, and keep following up, right? <clears throat> and the next step is you want to schedule a meeting, right? Either face-to-face -face or video if if, if, uh, if it makes sense. And then this is based on these three, three questions again. 
If they're actively rec recruiting for your skill set right now, you ideally want to aim for a further phone conversation or even a video interview right now, given, you know, given the whole situation with COVID. And uh, also additionally, if they if they've recruited, maybe they're not recruiting for your skill set right now, but they have in the past, or maybe they anticipate in the future. What you want to do is you still want to push for a further conversation and a further meeting. So they at least keep you keep you in mind for free future opportunities when they do come up and you're able to build that that initial relationship, right? And, and a lot of staffing agencies also, by the way, are very open to scheduling that face-to-face -face conversation or that video conversation. So you can keep in touch and, and uh, you know, keep building that relationship. <clears throat> yeah, I, I already covered that. But uh, uh, and so asking those three questions will help you make that decision, right? Whether it makes sense for you to follow up and all that. Uh, so tip number four, right? And before I get into that, let's see if there's any question. Uh, hey, Dean, if you are a new grad student, how will you approach to write recruiters if they want three to five years of experience? Yeah, Suja, I'll, I'll get to your question shortly, but that's a great question. So tip number four, tips for meeting with a recruiter, right? And this is staffing agency or corporate recruiter. Uh, so you're meeting with a recruiter. Number one, you got to treat the meeting as if an actual interview, right? Whether it's a video, on-site, or phone. And especially if it's a corporate recruiter. If it's a corporate recruiter, you're meeting with a corporate recruiter. This is within, internally at the organization. You definitely want to, I mean, it's pretty much an actual on-site interview at that point, Right. Uh, but even let's say even if it's a staffing agency, you still want to, you know, treat it like a like a just like any other interview, right? Treat it like an actual interview because the staffing agency is being employed by an organization. Remember, an organization is paying the staffing agency to go out there and find them top talent. So the staffing agency is going to be evaluating you as a potential candidate and as a, and, as, and as a potential fit for whatever positions they're recruiting on. And if not right now, maybe something potentially in the future. Right. So first impressions still count, folks. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, be prepared to speak about yourself and your professional experience. Very important, right? Obviously, but <clears throat> this is the this is the mistake a lot of you make. When speaking of your previous experience, focus on the results you achieve, not just tasks and responsibilities. A lot of you are talking about tasks, responsibilities, and duties. Now that might sound impressive to you, uh, you know yourself as a job seeker, obviously. But remember, the recruiters hearing and listening to candidates speak about tasks, duties, and responsibilities. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, every day, all day, uh, especially if they're recruiting for a specific role, right? So speaking about it, by, by the end of the day, your tasks, your duties, and your, your responsibilities, nothing impressive about those folks. I'm just being realistic with all of you. That's the rea reality of the situation. So what you want to do is you want to attach the results you achieved as a result of your tasks, your duties, and your responsibilities, right? So if you did X, Y, Z, you said, yeah, I did X, Y, Z. Well, what was the result of X, Y, Z? What did that result in? Why was that important? What was the impact? Impact is probably the key. I should have used impact as a word here. What you want to mention is when you're, when you're discussing yourself, when you're discussing your professional experience, what was the impact you had? What, what, how, did, how did what you do? How did your tasks, your duties, and your responsibilities, how did that impact the organization, right? And the key things you want to mention is, you know, those main things, right? Did, did something you do, did this project you work on, did it result in a, a renewal of a contract? Did it result in an increase of revenue for the company? Did it, did it result in time savings, cost savings? All that, all those metrics, numbers, and KPIs, right, that are, that are really important. You want to focus on that because I guarantee most job seekers are not focusing on that. They're not mentioning that. They're only speaking about tasks, duties, and responsibilities. So separate yourself from those other people, folks. Talk about the results and the impact you achieve, right? And uh, especially, and also the, the second bullet here, if you're meeting about a specific position of interest, you want to highlight the most relevant aspects of your background, right? If you're meeting about a specific role, uh, going back to that example I gave about a project manager with ERP experience, you want to highlight your ERP projects, right? And, and again, uh, speak about your ERP pro projects, but highlight those, uh, the ROI, the result, the impact that you achieve, right? <clears throat> and be an expert on your resume. I can't tell you how many job seekers I met with. By the way, don't think I'm talking about junior level people, folks. I'm talking about all the way junior, all the way up to senior people who aren't fluid in explaining and going over their resume. A lot of job seekers do not know how to sell people on their resume. So you, and you need to take the time. And this is something you need to practice, by the way. And a lot of senior, senior folks, uh, make the mistake, you know, when you're at a senior level, you get a little cocky at some point, right? You get a little overconfident and cocky, like, oh, yeah, I, I know this stuff like the back of my hand. Um, and as a staffing agency recruiter, I have had senior level candidates turned down from interviews, rejected from candidates simply because they, they, they couldn't, you know, they didn't do the basic, you know, stuff uh, required for interviews. So be humble enough, folks, be humble enough. If you're at a senior level, be humble enough to go through the basics, go over your resume. Are you explaining your resume, your position, your experience, your impact, your results, and all that stuff? Practice it. Practice it. Uh, role play it. If you have someone you can practice with, 
do that do that with uh, someone you can practice with in that case right but you want to be able to run the recruiter through your resume right and uh, and and again um uh, the recommended structure i always recommend right uh, and I'm, I'm i'm using the same word twice but the, the recommended structure that i would suggest when you're when you're explaining your positions to a recruiter right and a recruiter is usually going to say hey so can you run me through your experience on your resume can you tell me about your experience at company abc the, the, the recommended approach I would suggest, folks, is start at the company level, right? Explain the company, explain the department, explain the team, and then explain the individual contribution. It's very logical. It's very easy to follow. And don't assume the recruiter knows about the company unless it's some well-known brand like Microsoft or Google or something like that. Explain the company, the organization, the size, the scope of the organization, then get into the, the project level, the department level, the team level, and all of that. And then finally, something I wanted to mention here is you want to select standout projects and accomplishments. And, and speak about your I accomplishments and your we accomplishments. What I mean is talk about your individual contributions and talk about your team contributions, right? And the reason why I mentioned this is like uh, this simply due to the beliefs of some people out there. I remember, I remember once as a recruiter, I was at a, <clears throat> at a previous agency, right? And I remember in one week we had, we had these uh, two clients to, uh, to visit our, our agency, two totally different organizations, by the way, right? This one client came in, you know, we, we did the whole tour thing. We gave a tour. We had this, you know, lunch and learn stuff. And they were talking about what they look for in a candidate. And I remember this one client said, well, you know, the first thing I look for is, you know, if, if they don't, if, if the candidate, if a job seeker does not mention uh, the word I in terms of what they did, I, I, I don't move any further with them. Because if they're only talking about team stuff, then I don't know what they did as an individ, individual, con contrib individual contributor, right? So I left that meeting. I was like, okay, okay. So, so, you know, they got to focus on the team. Then I remember the next week we had another client come in and same thing, right? Tour of the whole place, lunch and learn, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. And then we were asking them, okay, so what do you look for in, in your ideal candidates? And this hiring manager said, <clears throat> well, the first thing I look for is I look for the, you know, that they, they talk about, you know, what, what they did in a team. If they keep talking about, I did this, I did that. And I did this. Well, that means they're not a team player. It means they're selfish and, and you know, they're not going to be part of the team. So if anyone talks too much about what they did individually, I don't consider them for the role, right? So at the end of this, I'm like, oh my God. So this, this one hiring manager last week said, you know, they're only going to look at, you know, the individual contribution. This, this person's saying that, you know, they're only going to look at team accomplishment. So look, the, the point here, folks, is you never know what, what someone's going to be looking and hearing about, uh, sorry, lo looking for or, or listening to, right? So mention your individual contributions and your team contributions, right? That would be my suggestion because obviously there's people with these different viewpoints. Uh, you don't want someone to rule you out because you didn't talk about your individual contributions. You don't want, you don't want someone to rule you out because you only talk about your, your, uh, your team contributions, right? So just, just something random, you know, I just wanted to mention to all of you, very important. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> and then finally, determine the next steps before leaving, right? After you're meeting with the recruiter, you want to determine what are the next steps? If it's regarding a specific position, you want to find out uh, what are the next steps? Or will they be presenting you for the position? What are the next expected steps? Is it going to be a, an initial phone interview? Is there going to be a technical test? Is there going to be like how many steps in the interview process? You need to find this out and you need to determine what the, what the next follow-up steps are as well, right? Uh, and then, and then uh, make the most of your visit, especially if you're meeting with a staffing agency. Uh, make the most of your minutes. So, and find out who else you can meet with. If there's anyone else you can meet with. And, and by the way, this doesn't apply only to staffing agencies. <clears throat> Maybe you're meeting with a corporate recruiter, right? You want to find out, uh, if there's anyone else at the organization you can meet with, if they really like you, if they feel that you might be a fit or, or that, you know, some hiring manager on the team might want to meet with you. It's possible. They might, uh, they might have you meet someone else. Right. And in staffing agencies, there might be different teams focused on different types of roles and different types of clients. So it's possible that, uh, you know, they might want to introduce you to someone else on some other team. So always feel free to ask, hey, before I leave, you know, and I appreciate your time, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Recruiter. But uh, is there anyone else you would want me to meet uh, who, you, who you think uh, would benefit from meeting me right now while I'm here? Right. So feel free to ask that. It's a, it's a pretty standard question to ask. And then follow up and keep in touch, right? The, the, and that's yeah, that's definitely your responsibility. If you're already employed, keep a keep a calendar reminder to reach out to your recruiter contacts every quarter. Update them on your accomplishments. Don't just think about a job, folks. Think about your career, right? Because you want to keep in touch. You want to make sure the recruiters remember you and keep you in mind. You want to be the first person that they think about when they need someone with your skill set, right? So keep that in mind. <clears throat> now, tip number five: be proactive when in an active interview cycle, right? Uh, and what I'm saying basically here is, look, make the recruiter's job easy. You got, you got, if you're actively in an interview cycle with a recruiter, recruiter's representing you, 
uh, again, whether it's staffing agency or corporate recruiter, make make their job easy, right? And then at your end, set realistic expectations at your end. If after the interview you're completely uninterested, you're not you you got like zero interest, be upfront about it. Just be upfront, right? Say what you mean, mean what you say, right? Get back when you say you'll get you're gonna get back. Uh, any any required information required at your end, get them in, get that into the recruiter as soon as possible, especially if you're in, interested in the opportunity. And, and also, at the, at the, especially at the latter stages of the interview cycle, when there might be offer negotiations going in place, uh, any required information, you're interested in the role, try to get it as soon as possible. Now, at your end, you definitely want to set the communication rules right at the gate, right? And you need to have a very candid conversation early on in your relationship with the recruiter so that you can set realistic expectations for yourself and also kind of set the tone of the relationship moving forward. And you, you need to take responsibility for that. So ask your recruiter, how real, hey, um, you know, Dean, how realistic is it for me to expect detailed, uh, sorry, that should be detailed feedback, not details feedback, uh, to expect detailed feedback throughout the process, right? Very, very direct question. You need to be very direct, folks, right? How realistic, hey, Dean, how realistic is it for me to expect detailed feedback throughout the process? Dean, I li I'd like for you to keep me updated even if I don't get the job. Is that is that reasonable for me to ask? Right. Ask these direct questions up front, folks. Then you won't be disappointed if the then if the recruiter starts ghosting you and stuff later on, you know that this, you know, hey, this person is not an ethical person because when I spoke to them up front, I asked them these questions. They said, Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're definitely gonna keep you updated. And now they're ghosting me. So now you can evaluate if you want to work with this recruiter in the future, right? But you need to be asking these direct, uh, you know, transparent questions so you can set that set those rules right up front. Uh, hey Dean, how often would it be okay for me to follow up with you? Right. Uh, and this could be after the interview or after the second interview, the phone interview, the video interview, after the final interview, you need to have these, you, you need to ask these questions up front, right? And, and again, this is all about setting realistic expectations for both parties, right? And they'll, they, they'll let you know up front, uh, well, you know, what to expect regarding these. <clears throat> and then, hey, Dean, how soon can I usually expect you to get back to me when I reach out, right? Obviously, as a candidate, you're going to be reaching out about, re reaching out about feedback and getting updates and this and that. Uh, so asking this allows you to get a realistic outlook as to how soon I'm usually able to get back because maybe I'm, I'm working in a whole, uh, I'm working in a large volume of roles and positions, right? So you need to identify that right up front so that you know, okay, yeah, you know, Dean, Dean's not going to get back to me right away, but he said that he's going to get back to me within 24 hours. And also <clears throat> very important if you're speaking to staffing agency recruiters, right? Can you let me know about other opportunities you might be recruiting on, which would be a fit, Right. Look, if you're if you're in partnership, if you're being represented by a staffing agency recruiter, it's possible they might have other upcoming positions and opportunities which might be of interest to you, right? And if you're a great candidate with a great skill set and great background, great, great experience, uh, obviously the staffing agency would you know might be very open to presenting you for other, other positions, right? That might come up if their their current client is is non-responsive or they're not interested in you and stuff like that. So make sure you ask that. And same thing goes for for the corporate recruitment side as well, right? So I mean and no harm in asking folks, right? So so make sure you ask these questions. Uh, and look, I just wanted to, to uh, kind of end this off with, look, if a recruiter is representing you and they're, they're non-responsive, that's definitely unprofessional, right? I mean, myself as a recruiter, I do my best. If I'm representing a candidate, uh, I keep candidates updated regarding their status, whether it's good news, bad news, or no news, right? That's my, that's my philosophy. But that does not mean every recruiter out there has that philosophy. You will face disappointment. You will face recruiters who don't get back to you, who represent you, you know, when they want something from you, uh, they, they get your resume and all that stuff. They, yeah, they get your details, your information, your, you, you, you do your whole pitch and all that. And then suddenly they ghost you and they're, you know, uh, they, they don't get any response from the client and all that. You invest the time in meeting with their client. After that, they completely ghost you. 100% unprofessional, 100% unprofessional. I completely agree with all of you out there regarding that. But but you need to you need to understand that unfortunately you know that that is something that's going to happen. But what I'm saying is don't take it personal. It could have nothing to do with you. And I, now I'm not saying that it's right for recruiters to do that. But most of the time it's usually nothing to do with you. It could be something to do with the client. The client suddenly disappeared. The client suddenly non-responsive. The client decided to hire someone on their own, or or the recruiter got busy with a whole bunch of other stuff. Not saying that that's right. Not saying that that justifies the recruiter not responding to you. What I'm saying it, it what I'm saying is it usually has nothing to do with you. So just move on. Uh, and, and if you feel that this is a recruiter you never want to work with in the future, then, then, you know, put that in stone, set that in stone, right? Because assuming you ask those previous questions that I put up there, right? Uh, the communication rules, if they said yes to each of those or, or, or let you know that they would be reaching out and, and they suddenly don't, then that shows the kind of person that they are, right? So keep that in mind and, and just keep pursuing and keep putting yourself out there for the right opportunities. 
Now, final tip. And I've been going at this while. We're almost at an hour. Hopefully, all of you are still there and it's not just... Uh, yeah, yeah, all of you are still there. Awesome, fine. <clears throat> uh, so tip number six, folks, is always keep pursuing other channels, right? Never depend on the recruiter to find you a job. This goes back to what I spoke about earlier before. Using recruiters should be just one of your many channels or tools in your job search, right? Always remember that. Always keep that in mind. Very important. Never depend solely on recruiters to find you work. Keep using other avenues in your job search, right? Very important, folks. LinkedIn, right? Direct applies, networking, brand building, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many other avenues. Using recruiters should be one of your one of your tools uh, in your arsenal, in your in your in your channels, right? That you use for your job search. If uh, if you only depend on recruiters, it could end up with you getting disappointed. Because remember what I said before: recruiters' primary function is to find talent for their organizations or for organizations. So re using recruiters should be one of your one of your channels. So you, but you you need to use all other avenues available to you. So just keep that in mind. And uh, finally, keep and also keep uh, keep building relationships with recruiters. Definitely, if you're if you're working with a recruiter, you're being represented by a recruiter. It's an easy way to bypass hundreds and even thousands of competing applications and get yourself in front of the right uh, right people and decision makers and employers and organizations. So it's definitely a good one to keep. Uh, but just keep these realistic expectations in mind. That was my intention in this presentation. I hope I was able to convey that to all of you uh, in terms of uh, you know setting those realistic expectations, right? And that's it. That's it. I'm going to open up the Q&A right now, but I'd love to connect with all of you. I uh, hope this information was helpful. I know we're almost at an hour. Uh, I think I, uh, uh, yeah, and, and I already shared my LinkedIn profile, but if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me. My link's right there. Or just look me up by my name, uh, Dean Kulawira. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I also have, also have three weekly live shows I do. On Tuesdays is my Tech Talks with the Tech Recruiter where I invite uh, IT professionals, IT experts, in the space to talk about various tech related topics. So if you have an interest in IT or technology topics, feel free to tune in. Uh, Wednesdays, I do my weekly uh, job search tips segment where I provide job search tips and then open the floor for live job search questions. And then Thursdays, I have my, uh, my weekly job search chat where I invite uh, job search experts, uh, various job search experts from the space. I interview, I ask them questions about the job search. They, sh they share their own tips and advice. Uh, so a lot of great content on there on, on LinkedIn, folks. Feel free to tune in. I'm also active on other social media channels uh, such as YouTube, uh, Twitter, Periscope. Uh, what else? Um, um, Instagram. And I think that's and Facebook as well. So feel free to connect with me and uh, be happy to connect with all of you. And now I'm just going to open up the floor for questions. Uh, so let me just open this up here and let me know <clears throat> if... Uh, if all of you have any questions, I'll if I can just figure out how to stop sharing my screen, maybe. I don't know. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm having some difficulties, but anyway, let, let me see here. Any 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 questions uh, in the comments? Let's see here. So Martin says, uh, yeah, I think I read that. So thanks thanks for your feedback, Martin. Appreciate that. Uh, Shrujal says, hey Dean, if you're a new grad student, how will you approach the right recruiters if they want three to five years of experience in your re relevant field? Yeah, sure, Shrujal. The thing is, uh, you know, most recruiters, for the most part. Uh, they will be focused on, uh, and, and again, this is my experience. Now, if you're, if you're talking about staffing agencies, Shrujal, staffing agencies for the most part work on positions that, that range from the, the intermediate to senior level. That's usually the sweet spot. So most of the times at a staffing agency, we don't really work on entry-level roles, right? Now, that doesn't mean that, that there are no entry-level roles at staffing agencies, but unfortunately, if a staffing agency says, yeah, we need someone with three to five years experience, there's nothing they can really do about it, uh, Shrujal, because that's what their clients, because remember, the requirements from come from the client, right? Uh, and even if it's cor corporate recruiters, that's what the the, the corporate uh, uh, recruiter does. They get their requirements from the hiring manager. The hiring manager says, okay, uh, you know, Mr. Miss Recruiter, the, this is my requirement. I, I really need someone with three to five years experience. Nothing the recruiter can do for it, Shrujal, right? So what I would suggest is uh, don't waste your time on role. If you're entry level, if you're a new grad, Shrujal, don't waste your time on positions that require three to five years experience, put your focus on the entry level roles so that you're making the most effective use of your time. Right. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, who else? Uh, so I hope that helps Shrujal and thanks for your question. We got Hima. So Hima, Hey Hima, I think we're connected on LinkedIn as well. Right. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, so Hima says sometimes for the one position, multiple staffing agency approaching. So is it okay to send resume to all those agency for the same position or just be in touch with any one agency? Yeah. Hima. So, the, so uh, this is a great question. So, so definitely, there are sometimes on, 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 on what, for those of you watching, by the way, folks, what uh, Hima is saying is sometimes for one position, there might be multiple agencies 
there might be multiple agencies working on it, right? So uh, what he might saying is it okay? Is it okay to present your resume for all the agencies? So that doesn't reflect well on you, Hima, because uh, you need to be uh, like you know, you you need to uh, because if if those multiple agencies present you for the same role, like the the clients not gonna you know, it's gonna it's just gonna be a whole internal you know behind the scenes kind of a disaster there, right? And, and it's also gonna reflect badly on you as a candidate because then there's a lack of trust, and the agency is gonna be like. Because then let's say one agency says, uh, gets feedback from the client and the client says, oh, well, well, you know, you presented HEMA to us, but HEMA has already been presented to us by another agency. Guess what? Then this agency is going to be like, okay, so if she already knew she was a, she was presented for this role, why did she tell us that she wants to apply for this role? And it's just a waste of time on the part and on your part as well, HEMA. So it reflects badly on you uh, in terms of your relationship with the agency. It's possible the agency might decide not to work with you in the future. They might say that okay, you're not you're not transparent, you're not upfront, you weren't clear and 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 uh, and direct in, in your intentions, and that you were already presented. So I would suggest Hima, if you've already been presented, just be upfront about that. Uh, don't don't you know burn bridges with these various agencies because it's possible you might want to you know do business you you know uh, uh, be presented for roles by these agencies in the future. So you don't want to burn those bridges, you don't want to ruin that. So if you've already been presented, Hima. Go with whatever agency has pre has presented you, and uh, just be upfront with the other agencies, right? So hope that helps, Hima. Uh, Tushar says absolutely wonderful presentation, Dean. Hey, no, no worries, Tushar. Appreciate that. Appreciate the feedback. Uh, Martin says great presentation. Learn so much. Please be sure to share if you can. Yeah, my pleasure, Martin. Appreciate that, and and thanks for tuning in. By the way, great to see you. Uh, see you here, Martin. Hope you're doing great. Omid Reza says thank you so much. Uh, no worries. Uh, no worries, uh, Omid. And then Shujal says, thanks, and I will get in touch with you through LinkedIn for any further questions. Awesome. That's all the questions here. Uh, let's see here. Renato says, thank you so much, Dean. It's a great time to, uh, to be here. The information you shared is really helpful. Uh, Hima says, thank you, Dean. It's great information. Yeah, no worries, folks. I'm glad uh, glad everyone got great information out of this. And look, folks, uh, you know, look me up on LinkedIn. Add me. Follow me, right? Uh, because I put out a lot of great content, and it's free. You know, no strings attached, nothing like that. Every week I go live on LinkedIn. So I'll be sharing a lot of information over the over, you know, and, and again, I do, I, I, I post a lot. Like it's not, it's ridiculous the amount of con like content I put out every week and I'm not bragging, but uh, I'm one of the most active IT recruiters on LinkedIn. And, and, you know, it's not just advice only for IT professionals, but it just applies for everyone, you know, whatever your skill set. So feel free to look me up on LinkedIn. Happy to connect with you. Happy to have you in my, uh, you, you know, in my, in my network. So feel free to do that. And if you have any questions from this session, feel free to message me. Uh, just for context, folks, I do get I do get a lot of uh, uh, you know messages and stuff. So for context, just let me know that you 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 were on this presentation at Toronto Jobs, and uh, then I know the context, and I'll I'll, I'll do my best to get back to your uh, questions as soon as possible. Uh, so I know the session is going to end soon. So thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I hope this information was helpful. Most importantly, folks, apply the information. Don't just listen to it. Don't just feel pumped up and motivated. Take action. Take action, folks. Please take action. That's what's going to make the difference. I know it's tough times right now. Stay positive. Keep taking action. Keep moving forward. And uh, keep doing what all of you got to do to get, get where you want to be, right? So uh, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, Tushar, how are you going to share your deck, Dean? Yeah, Tushar, I'll, I guess I'll figure that out with the organizers uh, in terms of how to share that. Uh, or I might even post it on my LinkedIn. So uh, just feel free to follow me or connect with me on LinkedIn. All right. Thanks so much, folks. Uh, and uh, everyone, have a great day. Have a, have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.